Welcome to Create Your Own Reality, a show about hope, inspiration, and encouragement. A program that will feature guests and topics that may inspire you to think about what is real and how you can create miracles in your life. Your host, Buddy Schlang. Joining us on Create Your Own Reality, I'm your host, Badish Lang, and today's topic is Paranormal Research. We have the founder of Paranormal Researchers of Oregon Society, Mark Miner, and his associate, Michelle Ramsey. Mark's team of eight professional investigators are involved in all perimeters of the paranormal and supernatural. Because I've had my own experiences with ghosts and spirits over the years, I thought this would be an exciting subject to discuss with professionals. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Mark, so much. Michelle. Hello. Okay. Um, my first question is, how did the group get started uh, investigating the paranormal? Well, uh, me, and Michelle, and another co-founder, Julie, um, was in a, another prior group, and we. Uh, we're n we weren't happy with the professionalism in that group, so we decided to start our own group um, that would involve the law enforcement, involve more of the, of the community, and um, show more of a, a higher pro professional yes. um, etiquette to what we do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Very br uh, briefly, please explain some of the equipment that your team uses. The only equipment we use is digital cameras, um, digital recorders and EMF detectors. And the reason being is because um, no other equipment has been scientifically proven to be accurate other than those three. Um, when other equipment is able to be scientifically backed by various um, institutions, then we will use that Kay. equipment. Michelle, what is your favorite piece of equipment to be using on an investigation? I prefer the voice recorder. I like to ask the questions and every once in a while I get an answer. It's kind of exciting to get an answer to a question, a specific question that you've um, exactly. asked. Right. Now, do you get your get to check that while you're in the vest investigation, like you might be asking the question and then wait a minute or two, do, can you go back and actually hear if something's been said so that you can maybe uh, ask another question? Uh, we could but we don't. We wait till evidence review okay. to go over everything. Okay. And then if we do actually get something, a name, an age, we go through our all the research that we do do and to see if we can back it up so we can use it. Okay. So an interjection in there real quick is um, with our group we don't just investigate once. Um, we, we Once we do our invest, uh, evidence review then we go back and we go further with it. Um, it's just not a one night as required probably right yeah, yeah. exactly because we want to get to know them and why they're sticking around you know there is the if we do have any t spiritual um, beings there then they're as much as our clients as you know who's called us exactly you know, right okay what sort of training has your group had over time uh, well, we've been trained by um, various law enforcement um, to do investigate investigation tactics. Okay. Um, such as how we question, where we place our equipment, um, how we have a more controlled atmosphere uh, environment um, so that we can filter out a lot of the background, uh, background ambient noises. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you were telling me earlier that you have contact with a lot of other, uh, other paranormal researchers. That must be kind of fun because you guys get to swamp stories and, oh, yeah. and share things, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's like a proverbial campfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you ever get called in uh, on any of their uh, investigations or vice versa? You call some of them in? Um, actually, yeah, we just started doing that. And um, we're working closely with a few paranormal groups uh, to join a coalition mm -hmm. in this, in this uh, state. Oregon, to, yeah. Yeah, okay. in, in the state of Oregon. And so we could uh, to work together more, you know, to, to broaden our How many organizations in are there in, in Oregon? Oh. Um, a lot. Yeah. Are there really? <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. say about anywhere from 50 to 70 um, paranormal shocked. groups. 
Really? Yeah. They come and they go. But the main, the main ones that has been around for years, some as, as much as 22 years, um, I would say about 18 groups okay. that are well established. Well, you know, one of the reasons I wanted you guys to come on the show is I read an article in the Oregonian that was so incredible and it showed the integrity, uh, the, the compassion, the understanding that you had, uh, have uh, towards people who have not been able to be buried and that the state basically uh, holds on to them or puts, uh, you know, there's no formal mm -hmm. uh, burial at all. And uh, could you tell me a little bit about that? Is that, that going to be a, a, a nonprofit or what are you doing with that? Um, the, the Oregon Indigent Burial Fund is a state-ran uh, fund. Okay. And the state basically pays for the, the death certificates for the indigent, and that's where it stops. Um, once the indigent goes to the mortuary, um, the mortuary is out the money. And basically what happens to the indigent, mm. those who aren't donated to the colleges, um, are just put into a plot with no, with just Man. a marker. So um, Ann Saker with the Oregonian, what she does is she matches the indigent up with the family, and then uh, Christine Stone actually runs the state organization that um, sends those indigent to the funerals. Where we step in, or excuse me, to the mortuaries, and where we step in is we refund that money to the mortuary. And not only do we refund that money to them, but we go a step further and buy the headstone and flowers to be put on the grave. Um, everybody wonderful. has a right to be Absolutely. heard. Absolutely. You know. Everybody's human. Right. Exactly. Everybody deserves it. It doesn't matter where you live. Exactly. Right. You know, so. Well, I really appreciate that kind of thinking. I really do. Right. It's refreshing. It could be one of us. You never know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, have you seen anything uh, paranormal that could not be explained in a scientific way? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You want to take some of this, or um, we have a couple pictures that okay. that Personal you resume. sent us, and and the first one um, they're going to be putting up here in a moment. Um, you can start explaining what that one was. Okay. Um, well, the there's one that's. Um, it, it looks like a fog, yeah, a mist fog that comes up out of the ground. Um, we, were, we weren't even on an investigation that night, and we were just going down to the park testing out equipment. And um, I, I started noticing on my camera um, certain anomalies that were coming up. Um, one thing I should state is we're not anomaly hunters. We're specific claim people, but on our group, but on this Pacific night, anomalies came at us and um, I had no clue what would, this was so I sent it off to um, a colleague of mine in Missouri um, who uh, works with the Federal Bureau of Investigations to analyze this and they had, they couldn't explain it at all um, there was no fog no lights in the area um, no reason at all why nobody was smoking we I'm sorry. That's okay. We did do the breath test, you know, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. stand there, take pictures of each other, breathing to see if, if it was no, breath. No, it's or... more common than I think than most people realize. I remember um, I went to um, buy a, a laughing Buddha statue to put in my backyard, and I had an, a big old stump there. It was, like, going to be perfect for my backyard, sort of foresty. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband took a picture. It was... It was just uh, before sunset, just enough light, and we had seven entities in our photograph. Mm. And um, he blew it up for me so that I could actually see full physical uh, face, hair, the whole thing. It was absolutely wow. amazing. Yeah. That, wow, that'd be really cool yeah. to see. I want something like that. <laughs> well, he has yeah. a knack with a camera. He seems to be able to capture that type of thing on a camera. I'm, I've got a picture that he took in Hawaii where with a spray of water that came up, there's a full-figured woman in the spray. It's absolutely stunning. Oh, yeah. It could win a contest. It's that clear. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah and w one thing that we, um, we, we try to separate ourselves from is what is called matrixing. Um, any, like, I don't know. Anybody here can say, you know, I can look at a wood door and see a face, you know, or whatever. Oh, well, yeah. Um, we all do this. 
So when we go on investigations, m many times we will come across something and we're like, oh my God, is that something? Or, and you know, of course we take pictures and get evidence, but we have to really watch that matrixing effect with us. Um, and then when we do get something like a full apparition picture or something like that, we don't stop there, we go even further. But on a personal note, um, I think every one of us, you know, and it sounds like including you, um, I, I believe everybody has had an incident with the paranormal. Um, it's just they're very uncomfortable talking about it. A lot of people are when um, they shouldn't be. You know, it's it's, it's everything natural, right? It's a part of life. Exactly. Well, have um, Michelle, have you seen orbs? I I've seen them in photographs. I don't count them as spirits. Most of the ones I've seen, especially in photographs, have been out in the woods. You got tree pollen, tree dust, dirt, animals in the trees. Um, a few of them in houses where they're got full carpet. Walking around, you're gonna stir stuff up. I I've haven't seen orbs actually... with faces. I know they. <laughs> I know that they exist, but I mm -hmm. guess, like you said, you I... have to be very discerning. Yeah, right. Because, because, because I haven't I... seen one actually manifest or. Right. turn into a full-figured apparition or anything. Well, how about so. when they move across the room? And it's, you know, uh, not about wind taking there or dust. It actually is something that's intelligent, that's moving. Our group believes that orbs are um, balls of energy. Um, it's kind of like if I were to stare at you and say that I could look at your aura and say it's blue. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. When a spirit, someone passes on and they're in the spirit world, they now become energy. And in order for them to try to get that energy up to talk or to manifest or something like that, they have to draw energy. And that's where we think these orbs of energy come from. Mm -hmm. um, no scientific community has ever proven what really an orb is. This is just our assumption. Um, but we can't really say, if I passed away tomorrow and I came back, I don't think I'd want to come back as a ball of light. I think I'd want my children to see me as who I am so they would feel comfortable. Um, so that's why I say we don't really believe that orbs are necessarily spirits. You know, there's so many variations of spirits' participation in the different um, dimensional worlds. And as a, par as a, a psychic medium, I, I can tell you that for me it's been more of hearing and, and feeling and then psychically seeing. Oh, and yeah. it has actually, although years ago I was living in a haunted house and I, uh, it was new, and I was walking through my house, um, passing my dining room, and there in the French doors was a full apparition of an Indian. And he spoke to me and told me that he wanted to talk to me. And it turns out that everything, uh, I did talk to him, uh, a couple days later, when no one was home, I don't know where I got this bravery, to tell you the truth. I mean, I've been, <laughs> I've been through so many things. I just, uh, I just put one foot in front of the other and feel just very blessed. But everything that that spirit told me turned out to be confirmed. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it did take me two years to clear the hundred Indians that were coming in and out of my property and creating havoc. Right. Yeah, it was a pretty, but I was quiet with it. I didn't tell anybody. Uh, I handled it on my own, and now when I think about it, you know, if there would have been a paranormal normal group around that I'd have known about, I'd have called them that fast right. because I had two psychic attacks in that house that were pretty scary. And, so. and, and such with that incident with, with the Indians, you know, in your house, um, you would have to question why would it end in being a house? So uh, there's a theory out there that um, when when someone passes on in any nationality, um, they go to what they perceive is their happiness, whether it be heaven or wherever. And so there's a theory that there's interdimensional yes. layers. And um, so they are, in, in, it's like radio waves in, yeah. the, in the sky. So here's a dimension, here's a dimension, and sometimes those waves touch and there's that communication there. Yes. That's the theory. 